the Lord has called us to fulfill a mission in Brazil, to expand the influence of the mission there. The challenges are great, and only by the mercy of God we will be able to advance. We left and started heading towards the airport of Chicago at around 4 in the morning. We drove about 2 hours. One of the signs that we should go to Brazil was that God used one of you to give us standby tickets to half of the family. So Pastor Marcus, my father, and I uh, were able to use those standby tickets. The way standby tickets work is like this. We pay a very inferior price uh, compared to the normal price for the tickets, but we do not have the assurance that we will have a seat in the plane. We can only know for sure after everyone has boarded. So we have to wait in the airport and once everyone is in the airplane, if there's space for us, the workers will then call us. We as a family are always together, we travel together, but this time due to economic reasons and receiving this blessing of the standby tickets, we had to separate ourselves during the trip. Half of the family went on one flight and the other half on another flight. Those of us who had standby tickets found some difficulties getting a flight. Our ticket was for the 6 a.m. flight, but at the end it did not work out, so we had to transfer it to the 8 a.m. flight. The plane was full and there was no space for us so they transferred us to the 10 a.m. flight, then to the 12 o'clock flight, and then to the 2 p.m. flight. All of them were full and there was no space for us. At 4 p.m. was the next flight to Houston. This would be our sixth try. Each flight left from different gates in the airport, so we ended up walking a lot. Our flight was from Chicago, Illinois to Houston, Texas. In Houston, we would make a connection at 9.45 p.m., which was the flight to Guarulhos, Sao Paulo in Brazil. If we did not arrive on time for the flight in Houston, we would lose it and we would only be able to try to get another flight the next day. We were praying that God's will would be done. Then, Pastor Marcus started saying who God is, in this way exercising trust in God. God is good, God is wonderful, God is powerful. And God worked miracles. The weather started to change, clouds started to appear, and then it started raining. The worker in the airport said that the flights would probably be delayed and that there was traffic out there. And this was what God used so that we could have a seat in the plane. And this happened because probably some people fear traveling in the conditions of uh, rainy weather, of stormy weather, and so they don't show up and then their seats become vacant. We praise the Lord for showing His care and for working miracles. We 
We arrived in Houston, safe and sound, praise the Lord, at 7 p.m. And there, the Lord also provided a place for us in the flight. By God's grace, we arrived in Brazil on Monday, July 1st at 10 a.m. And we got together with the rest of the family who had already arrived at 4 in the morning. When we arrived in Sao Paulo, we were tried because we had agreed on a price with the company to rent a car. But when we arrived there, they didn't want to do it for the price that was arranged before and we had to pay the triple amount three times more than planned truly it was a very unpleasant surprise but we trust that the lord is in control of all things once we had the car we started our journey we started traveling and it was amazing to see how the lord protected us one incident was that when we were driving in Sao Paulo at night, we were in the highway, lots of cars going very fast, and we were on the left side of the highway, and there was a car on the right side of the highway that I don't know how it happened, but the, the tire and the wheel, the whole thing just popped out of the car and started bouncing across the highway all the way to where we were, and once it got to where we were, it hit the guardrail and came back in front of us, just bouncing in front of our car. And we slowed down there in the highway. Everybody's going fast. We had to just stop the car. Praise the Lord that that tire, that wheel just did not touch the car. It got very close, but it stopped right there, just right in front of the car. And we really saw that the Lord and His angels were protecting us, that they were holding uh, that wheel, that tire, so that nothing would happen. We were very worried because it, it, there could have been a bad accident. And also, we had a car that was not ours. It was rented. So we were very, very thankful that the Lord protected us and protected everyone around us as well. So we stopped the car and moved the, the, the tire, that wheel, out of the way so that no cars would come across it and no accidents would happen. So we praise God for His protection, for sending His angels to be with us throughout that trip. We continued our trip throughout Brazil by God's grace expanding the influence of the mission there. On Sabbath, we shared God's message of health and healing with the Adventist Central Church of Numas, Goiás. Mais que tudo a gente precisa é entender como é que funciona a vida. Você quer que a igreja funcione na sua vida? Então quem tem que mudar para a igreja é você. Você tem que buscar a Deus de todo o vosso Lembra de Ana, mãe de Samuel? O que, que eu estava fazendo? Estava orando lá no santuário, chorando por causa das suas angústias, e os sacerdotes pensou que ela estava com a mão. Ela não estava preocupada com o que os outros iam pensar, mas você fica preocupado com o que os outros vão pensar e quer se ninguém encontrar com Deus? Não, você só vai encontrar com os outros. Há aqueles que se chamam bem, como? Mal. E chamam mal? Eu te digo assim, olha, eu te dizer, 
pessoal assiste um jogo de futebol, seleção brasileira. Brasil versus Alemanha. Empatou. Não posso tentar empatar. O que vai ter? Prorrogação. Ah, não, prorrogação. Ninguém fica lá na casa por prorrogação, não é verdade? Não, o pessoal fica, vai lá, traz mais futebol, traz mais sei lá o quê? Prorrogação. Aí empatou de novo. O que vai ter? Ninguém está preocupado com o tempo, não é verdade? Mas quando se trata, quando se trata das coisas de Deus, quando tem que ter prorrogação, o que acontece? E se tem que chegar aos pés? Aí pronto, já não tem mais nem público mais. Por quê? Olha, vamos ser honestos, vamos ser sinceros. Porque se a gente enganar a gente mesmo, como é que a gente pode receber cura? O primeiro passo da cura é admitir que nós enfermidades. Qual é o seu nome? Edson Rosa Mesquita. O que eu senti no meu coração foi uma mensagem muito oportuna para o meu viver, para mim me reconsagrar. Isso foi para mim. E senti também que foi muito oportuno para os jovens. Uma prova disto é que os jovens responderam bem ao apelo. Foram muitos jovens que foram até o altar para que o pastor orasse por eles. E depois do culto, vi muitos comentários positivos a favor da mensagem. Todos gostaram. E com certeza Deus foi louvado com a mensagem de sábado. O que eu senti interessante é que a igreja ficou concentrada, atenta, ligada. Até as crianças ficaram quietinhas. Anciãos como eu, em termos de idade, que às vezes dormiriam no culto, não vi ninguém dormindo, muito menos eu. E às vezes eu durmo na, na, na hora do culto, conforme a mensagem. E o pastor Marcos, com a sua didática, com a sua maneira de ser e de viver, nos prendeu a atenção e foi muito profunda a mensagem, muito oportuna. Vou ficar com saudade dele, já estou com saudade de vocês. Então, parabéns a toda a família. Gostamos muito, viu? A Igreja Adventista de Inhumas, Goiás, Brasil, ficou marcada no coração a presença de vocês. Deus tem aberto portas, tem nos abençoado, tem já trazido esperança e uma mensagem de salvação para mais pessoas. Pedimos suas orações, que vocês continuem apoiando essa missão, que é muito importante para que a gente possa continuar avançando. Muito obrigada, Deus abençoe vocês. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine.